All right, now to the Western Conference Finals where the Los Angeles Clippers for the third straight series got down 2-0 and then won game three as they did in this series. They beat the Suns 106-92 despite the return of uh, one Chris Paul. That was not quite enough for Phoenix as he struggled uh, in his return from the full. He was just five for 19. Devin Booker just five for 21. So combined, they were 10 for 40 and just 30 points between them. Paul George was a difficult shooting night, but he did rack up 27 points, 15 rebounds, and eight assists on nine for 26. Reggie Jackson continues his strong uh, playoffs with 23 points. He was nine for 17. And the Clippers use a strong third quarter, and they end up winning this one by 14 points. They're back in the series, game four tonight. Drink, was this uh, was this a bit of an aberration, or is this something that the Clippers can build upon? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, listen, I, I do think the Clippers can build upon this. Why do I think that? I think, you know, the performances from Jackson, the performances from the likes of Mann, um, the defense you're getting from Beverly, and, and just – shall I say, Paul George leadership. I don't know how much it, he's impacting that department, but he got to be doing something because Kawhi Leonard up there in his private box with the kids. So this all on Paul George, right? Um, so with that said, I, I do think they could build upon this. I think this is a good lunch pad for them to see what they want to do for the rest of the series. But I also think it's an admiration a little bit. Here's the deal. Chris Paul coming back um, – it was rust, uh, it, you know, re residual from the protocol, whatever the case might be. Chris Paul wasn't really Chris Paul. Devin Booker coming in here with his mask on, I, I think he was lost in the sauce. I don't, you know, we have to understand when that mask, for whatever reasons, you got to be a special type of player to still be able to perform with this hard cast mask on your face. And you like these straps around your head and all this, like that bothers you when you're an NBA player. Why? Because you come up in a rhythm and a, and a pace type of deal. This mask don't help that rhythm at all. Um, and once again, we have to remember how young these players are for the Phoenix Sun. This is Devin Booker's first real action in the playoffs. He getting his nose broke. He getting the double team when he come down. He's realizing that it gets real the farther you get. It gets tougher, and that's what David Booker started to realize. This ain't a beat-up Lakers team. This ain't an undermanned Nuggets team. This is a young, this is a scrappy L.A. Clippers team. And listen, for you can say whatever you want about the Clippers. You say whatever you want about Patrick Beverly. Pat, hey, Patrick Beverly out here, he, he making Booker work. He, he out here roughing up Book. Hey, Patrick Beverly say, I'm going to earn my money in this series. You know, so listen, they're doing what they you supposed to do to a veteran team is doing what they're supposed to do to a young team like this. You rough them up, you let them know welcome to the playoffs, and that's how you get back in the series. But I cannot believe that Chris Powell will be rusted for the rest of the series. I cannot believe that Devin Booker is gonna keep that mask on for the rest of the series. Um, and then the likes of I think the biggest thing that happened in this game that makes me think that the Clippers will get back in the series is the injury to Cameron Payne. If they do not get him back because of his ankle and he missed, I don't know, let's say the next two to three games, that's going to do him a problem for the, the Suns. Why? Chris Paul is an older player. He plays a slower pace of game. When he was out, Cameron Payne was playing a more high pace game. So high pace equals plus for younger players. Slow pace equals plus for older players. So that's why when you watch teams like the Lakers play, they play at a very slow pace. Every now and then they get in transition and they run and gun. But for the most part, the Lakers played a very slow pace game. Why? Because they were an older team. Now, the Phoenix Sun. They had got accustomed to the faster pace with Cameron Payne. DeAndre Aiden at the rim. Booker coming off the, you know, the wings doing what he do. Cam Johnson, Mikael Bridges, et cetera, et cetera. They're running, gunning because they're younger. This is how they, this is how they're used to playing now because of AAU and then you go to college and then you come to NBA and it's just. So I think the Suns will have to 
readjust here a little bit. They're going to have to readjust to Chris Paul coming in here with a slower pace. Chris Paul will have to be better, though. If you're going to come in and change the whole infrastructure of the Suns like you're doing now, we're going to need you to play better, Chris Paul, because they were smoking on all cylinders when when Cameron Payne was running, running the point. And I would say this. You know, Chris Paul started this whole high assist, low turnover thing before he got hurt. I thought Cameron Payne took that up to the next level when he, he stepped in for Chris Paul. I need We have to make sure that Chris Paul does come in and he keeps that going as well. I think that was one of the big things um, in the last series and then coming into this series that kept them, you know, relatively unscathed was their, their assist to turnover ratio was outstanding. Um, so they got to keep that going. But to be honest with you, I, I think the Suns and Patrick Beverly defense, because I'm going to give him credit, I think the Suns were more of a obstacle to themselves because of the injury and because of the change of pace with Chris Paul. I think we get a more energized Suns team now because I don't know if Cameron Payne been ruled out for the game tonight already. But once they realize they're not going to get him back, I think their focus will go more towards, okay, we're going to have to play a slower pace. This is how we're going to get back to that, more of a control the game pace. And I think they'll play a little better tonight than they played in the last game due to that fact. But I, I do still think this is the Sun series to lose just because I don't – I don't know. I, I, I just – I got to make sure that Reggie Jackson is really ready because he seems to be the key – for the Clippers. Like, I know what Paul George's role is. Um, I know what Zubox do. Ty Lu, I got all that. But Reggie Jackson seems to be the guy that's really keeping this thing afloat for the Clippers. Like, mm -hmm. he's playing at an all-star level. Um, he's playing at the level that got him paid a while back, if I'm, yeah. if I'm being honest. He's playing at the level that, that got him paid. Um, he's looking really good. And then that allows players like Patrick Beverly to go out there and get you nothing on the offense, but, you know, do his thing on the defense where he's taking the other star out of the game or at least making it hard for him to play. And um, I really like that recipe for success, but I, I think the Suns kind of, you know, just kind of hurt themselves with their change of pace. But we'll, I, we'll get a better picture of that tonight when we're watching them play to see if the Suns, how much the Suns will miss Cameron Payne in this series tonight. I think I think it's I think it's an aberration. I just I can't I can't imagine the Clippers doing this again, recovering from a 2-0 deficit. And maybe maybe they win tonight and tie it up, but without Kawhi Leonard, I just and now the Sun the Suns are that they're healthy. Cameron Payne right now is listed as probable. We don't know how now. Even if he plays, we don't know if the ankle will impact him at you know all that much, but I mean, he's he's coming off the bench now. So you, they, they got their five horses in there. They are the most healthy team in the NBA. They've been give the give the trainer, give the trainer a little extra money. Give him a bonus. Because um, <laughs> this guy must be this guy doing something right. Paul George, the Clippers, Ty Lu, the, these guys deserve a ton of credit. And I, I, I am going to say this. If they if they pull this thing off and they they are they already to me uh this is as far as mental toughness goes this team is way up there among put them up there as, amongst whoever you want to if they if they are able to come back and win this series this is this this might be the most mentally tough team of all time I I I, I there's I don't think we I don't know if. Maybe there's a team out there that's done a multiple uh, two 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 zero deficits. They've come back, but three, I, I I guarantee that ain't happened before. And think about this now, what what does that say about Tyron Lue if they yeah. come back and win this series? Yeah, you, you got to because then you got to equate what he's been doing with the Clippers, what he did with Cleveland when they were this down is, three one in the NBA Finals. Yeah, came this back is, and won that. I think yeah, I and I would say I think already this is. This is his most impressive job that he's done coaching. I, I just think it's, you know, LeBron James, no LeBron James. That I think it starts and ends there. I think it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit easier, even though the 3-1 the stuff, but um, 
I think this is this is Ty Blue's best job that he's done, um, keeping these guys engaged. You you keep falling down 2-0, you know. I know the I mean you think about it, you fall down 1-0, it's about like 80% chance that the team that goes up 1-0 wins. It only goes, you know, further and further up when you're down, when you get down 2-0. So to be able to, you know, be resilient, be mentally tough and come back and, and win the past two series. And then, you know, the way that game two ended with the last second alley-oop, the gut punch, Paul George over here clanging free throws in clutch time. You know, that would have been, you know, I don't, if Phoenix comes in and they roll these dudes out of here, we I don't think we would have said nothing. It's like, well, Phoenix better and they, they healthier. And, you know, that's kind of almost what we, somewhat kind of suspected as these playoffs started to unfold. He's like, oh, we're AD down. Oh, oh Phoenix, we're going to slide on through. Oh, oh, Jamal Murray, yep, that injury showing up. You know, this whole Compazzo and Austin Rivers thing, they ain't going to get it done. Slide on into conference finals and now, oh, well, Kawhi hurt. Oh, here we go. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have held it too much against them, but that their mental toughness is something – that, that should be commended. I think Reggie, I think the points you made about Reggie Jackson are huge. I think he's been, you know, their most consistent player in this playoffs. And yeah, he's playing like the guy who Detroit thought they was getting uh several years ago. And don't don't also forget Marcus Morris, he's been hobbled too. So that's another that's another guy that we we can't like gloss that over. So but I think, you know, I, I got I gotta roll with Phoenix tonight just for the simple fact that Chris Paul and Devin Booker are not going to go ten for forty. They're going to, they I got they're going to be a lot better. Um, I got to believe Booker. Maybe he, you know, adjusts a little bit with the mask or whatever he's doing. But speaking as someone who has worn a lot of masks in the past year, I know how difficult it is to roll with them. I can only man, imagine. Man, you ain't wore no mask all over your face, man. What are you talking about over here? <laughs> I don't want to get. I don't want the CDC to cancel me. I've been taking it seriously. I just throw that in there. <laughs>